with Ascente CA. My name is Elena. On this channel, you are going to find videos about both human design and wellness success coaching, as well as yoga flows, because I am a manifesting generator and that's how we do. In the last video, we talked about generators and the manifesting generators. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about manifestors, projectors, and reflectors. This is going to be just a little bit longer because I am gonna cover all three energy types as well as the challenges that projectors and manifestors face. So if you are interested in this content, stick around to find out more about these human design energy types. And if you are enjoying all of this content, go ahead and subscribe by clicking that little subscribe button and then click the notification bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. We are going to start off today talking about the manifestor energy type. So the manifestors are here to create change. They are here to get things done and make things happen. How they do that is different for every single different manifestor based on their channels and their gates, the flavor that they bring to the party, but no matter what, across the board, manifestors are here to change things. The manifestor energy works in a bit of a spurt and a release situation. So what happens when a manifestor listens to their authority, their decision maker, which is going to be the next video that we cover off. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when that video pops up. Anyway, the manifestor needs to listen to their authority because once they say yes to something, they have full reign to initiate whatever that happens to be. When they initiate something, they have all of the internalized energy to pursue that thing and get it really moving. When a manifester is getting things off the ground and getting things going, it's so important. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is so important for manifestors to inform everyone around them. Manifestors are not looking for permission. They're not looking for somebody else to say yes. They just need to let everyone else who might be impacted what they're doing. Manifestors move so quickly. And if somebody around them gets caught off guard, a manifestor is gonna be hit with roadblocks, left, right, and center. So in order to avoid those roadblocks, it's incredibly important that manifestors notify people and inform them what they're about to do. This also allows people around them to get on board. So that means that the manifestors initial uptake energy can be supported by other people who really want to be part of that cause and all those people who don't want to be going in the direction that the manifestors going can drift off and drift away so that they don't become roadblocks to the change or to that new experiment or new project that the manifestor is leading. When a manifestor is following those impulses and they're following their authority, saying yes to the things that they want to be doing, and they're ensuring that they're following their strategy by informing those around them prior to doing what they're going to be doing, manifestors will feel a sense of peace. This is the cue that manifestors know that they're in alignment. When they have that sense of peace, when things are simple and people are on board with what they're doing and they're helping out and people who are not interested in what they're doing, just simply drift away. It's not a big deal. That's when manifestors know that they are in true alignment with their type. On the other side of things, when manifestors are out of alignment and they're out of the flow, or if they haven't used their strategy or authority and people are roadblocking them all over the place or they're bumping up against different challenges, a manifestor is going to know that they are out of alignment when they feel angry. So manifestors are really here to initiate. They're here to create change. 
And when a manifester has that yes from their authority, they have all the energy to get something going. The challenge and where manifestors might burn out is if they're trying to keep pushing something through when it's actually something that they don't want to do or they said yes to something that they really shouldn't have. One of the other reasons a manifestor might really experience some burnout is when they haven't used their strategy of informing others and they keep getting hit by everyone trying to stop them. So what's really correct for manifestors is to get that impulse, inform anyone who could possibly be affected by that impulse, by that change, and allow people to jump on board, initiate whatever this change, whatever this cause, whatever this action is that they really want to go out and do. And then if there's a, a no or if their energy fades, then they leave it and they don't try to see it all the way to completion. Maybe they get somebody else on board um, who's more interested in seeing the finishing details. So those are our friends, the manifestors. They are a very exciting bunch and they are here to create change and really initiate new ways. Okay, let's move on to our friends, the projectors. Now projectors are really fantastic at seeing patterns. They are very watchful. They pay attention to all the little pieces of the puzzle that are going on and they're able to connect dots and see patterns where other people might not be able to. It's a special quality that projectors really do well. Now the challenge for projectors is that because they have witnessed so much and because they have seen these patterns and because things become so clear to them, they want to share all the knowledge that they have. Unfortunately, if a projector hasn't been invited in, which is the projector's strategy to be invite, wait for the invitation, if a projector hasn't been invited to share, it can feel like they are yelling into a void. They might be standing in a room full of people, they might be having a great one-on-one -on -one conversation, but they just can't get a, a piece of information in edgewise, or they'll say something and nobody hears them. There's no receptivity to what it is that they're trying to share. When a projector is invited to share, all of a sudden people wait with bated breath to listen, to partake in, and to implement all of these brilliancies that a projector is able to share because they've been watching and paying attention. What's really important for projectors to pay attention to is waiting for that invitation. Now, here's the, here's the challenging piece and here's why it's so fantastic for projectors to live in this technological age. For a projector to be waiting for the invitation, it's not that they're sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. A projector waiting for an invitation can have a solid social media feed. They can have their own website. They can have a YouTube channel. They can be presenting things out into the world, but they're not soliciting. They're not asking. They're not cold calling. They're not um, following up with people. And they're not initiating like a manifester would be. Projectors get to do what it is that they're so excited to do. They get to partake in the things that they're invited to partake in. They get to go and they get to be with the people who love them and who they are have an open invitation with. And when someone invites them to be a guest on a podcast, when someone stumbles across their Instagram profile, when someone finds them in the YouTube search algorithm, all of those pieces give the projector the opportunity to be invited. And once they're invited, they get to check in with their authority, whatever that happens to be, their decision maker, 
And once they get that yes, they get to proceed forward. If a projector is working in a company or for an organization, it's really important that they're recognized for their energy type and for what they bring to the table. Having a projector as a leader, as a strategist, as somebody who is responsible for overseeing other things that are happening but not being in the depths of it, someone who is able to swoop in and touch point on various different pieces and then swoop back out again and trust the team to do the actual day-to-day -day touch point work, that's an ideal position for a projector to be in if they're in an organization. If a projector is a entrepreneur or working on their own or working with um, one or two other people building up something else, then it's really important for them to make sure that they are being recognized and that they are utilizing their skills and their gifts to oversee whatever is happening and that they don't get drawn down deep into the weeds of it all. What's really interesting about projectors is that when they're in flow, when they're in alignment, their signature, what tells them that they're in flow and in alignment is success. So it might sound like waiting for the invitation is sitting on your hands doing nothing or that there's no way you could possibly create success out of that. But the way that the projector energy actually works is that through waiting for the invitation, success kind of finds you. And that happens for all the energy types whenever we follow our strategy and our authority as well as the nature of our energy type. And then those unique details that we all have to ourselves, success does find us, but it's very specific for a projector in that success is the signature of this energy type. On the other hand, if a projector is trying to do things that are not in alignment with their energy type and they are pushing and initiating and reaching out to people and not being heard and not being invited, the not self theme for the projector is bitterness meaning that there is that sense of, well, why didn't they invite me and why didn't they listen to me? I said that and they didn't hear me, but I said it in the exact same way that this other person said it, but they listened to this other person. So if you've had those experiences before, that means that you likely might be a projector who was trying to push something forward, trying to initiate outside of your design. Unlike generators, manifesting generators and manifestors, projectors don't have any of the energy creating energy centers defined inside of them. This means that when a projector is on their own, they don't necessarily internally generate their own energy. It's not like a generator or a manifesting generator where they wake up in the morning with a full battery pack or a manifester who gets really excited about something and then can keep going on that thing because as they're doing something, as they're lit up, they create internalized energy. Projectors work with their energy in a more of an ebb and a flow, not so much a peak in a valley of a manifester, but a little bit of a softer ebb and flow. What this means for projectors is that it's okay to take lots of breaks. It's correct in your design to work for a period of time and then do something else for a period of time in the day and then work for a period of time and then do something else for a period of time in the day. And there's a flow that happens with that. Where projectors can have challenges with their energy is when they're out with other people, when we're out especially with generators, manifesting generators and manifestors and then they, or they live with those people and they take on that energy and think that that energy is theirs. What I mean by that is when a projector is in balance and out with other 
energy types, then the projector can utilize that energy and keep moving in that way as long as they're around those people. However, if a projector thinks that they're, they should be acting that way when they're working alone, they're going to get really disappointed and they're going to burn out because they're going to be trying so hard to use energy that just isn't there. And so for projectors, it's really important to be kind to themselves and to allow that ebb and flow with energy and to know that when they get home from being out with other people, they do need a period of time to allow others' energy to dissipate off of them. So it might be really beneficial for projectors, depending on who they live with or what type of work environment they're in, for projectors to go for a walk in between different points of their day, to give themselves some time to ground, to release others' energy, and to just be still or be quiet or be with themselves. You may have already figured out why I clumped these two together, but I'm gonna go into it anyway. As you've heard, manifestors are here to create and initiate and go do things. Now, if you think about that from a child, how does that child get treated? They're pushy, they're bossy, they're they're not telling people where they are. They're getting in trouble because they went off and did something and nobody gave them permission to do it. And then if you think about a projector as a child, they're constantly waiting to be invited and people are telling them, you have to speak up, put your hand up, speak out more, um, use your voice. Why are you sitting back and waiting? Go out and achieve what you want to achieve. Go and make things happen. And so the reason I put these two together to show their contrast is that when we take it back to look at how they're treated as children in their true natural way of showing up, they're given the complete opposite message of what works best for their energy type. Manifestors are basically conditioned to be projectors and projectors are basically conditioned to be manifestors. And then both sides end up in that not self theme of anger and bitterness. And that doesn't help anyone because we need everybody to show up in their truest expression and in the way that works the best for their energy type. But when we've conditioned each other to show up the opposite of what we naturally show up as, it becomes a challenge. So then you end up with adult manifestors who are sitting back and they're, at, they're waiting to be invited in and they're too afraid to step out and to take initiative because as a child, they were constantly slapped on the back of the hand to tell, and told no. And then as adults, you have projectors who are so good at seeing patterns and swooping in and sharing their information when they're invited, yelling at rooms that aren't listening to them because they haven't been invited to share. And then they're bumping up against roadblocks and challenges because they're wanting to showcase this information and nobody invited it in. So you can see where these two types bump up against each other and can possibly create some type of jealousy or disparity between the two. And that's what I really want to bring forward with these series of being popped together, the generators and the manifesting generators being so similar and yet so different, and the projectors and the manifestors basically being complete opposite. And you can see that we need everybody. So as we move through this, it's important to notice where you've picked up the conditioning of another type and to work on deconditioning yourself so that you're able to show up in your truest, highest fashion. I'm curious if you are a manifester or a projector, let me know in the comments section down below, where are you noticing conditioning showing up for you? Now it's time for our friends, the reflectors. 
And reflectors are unicorns. They represent about 1% of the population of the entire world, and they have no defined energy centers, and they may not have any defined gates either. So they could be completely undefined in their entire human design chart. This means that reflectors are here to experience the world around them through other people and through the, the way that other people are experiencing the world. So reflectors are here to be able to show us, reflect back to us, the health of the environment and the people that they're around. So it's really, really, really important for reflectors to be in healthy environments and around healthy people who feel good. So when a reflector is in those environments, you'll know. You'll know the state, the status of the environment and of the people that they're around because that reflector is in an optimum place and they feel good about life. For reflectors to make big decisions, because they're open, it's important for them to take a full 28 days, a full lunar cycle, to go through and experience and try on that decision from so many different perspectives. Because whoever they're around, whatever environment they're in, gives them a new experience of the decision that they're making which means that if they take that full lunar cycle to go through the decision-making process, they're able to be fully committed to that decision and to know that no matter what place they're in, it's gonna feel like the right decision. So when a reflector is in alignment and they're in flow, they feel the signature of delight, surprise, awe. Having a reflector that is in alignment, in flow, is a unique gift to be around. And when a reflector is out of flow, out of alignment, they're not in a conducive environment for them. They're not in a healthy community or relationship. They feel disappointment. Reflectors are the truest of empaths. Other charts have open areas where other people get to try on how it feels to be someone else or amplify how it feels or how that other person is feeling but reflectors being completely open really have a strong empathic quality to them and it's important that they're given the time and the space to try on the perspective of multiple different areas and multiple different people for them to be able to show up fully and completely. The beautiful part of human design is that it gives us all permission to be who we already know that we are and it gives us awareness to show up and acknowledge the differences of everyone around us. It's in the differences that we all bring and the different perspectives and the different experiences that we all come to this planet with and that we all grow through in our human experience that we become a truly connected and full culture and society. Without everyone showing up, there are missing puzzle pieces. And without each one of us showing up uniquely as ourselves, we're missing out on what that individual would be bringing to the table. And this is why I love human design so much and why I so want to share it out into the world is that none of us can do everything. We can't all fight every single cause. We can't all be passionate about every single thing even though manifesting generators will try to do that through all of us showing up in our unique way we can make the change we can forward the culture we can show up and express ourselves and be seen for exactly who we are and what we bring and that's what i want to share with you here 
So if you enjoy this content, if you're enjoying what I'm sharing here, please click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified next time I post a video. And let me know down in the comments how any of this resonated with you, especially if you are a manifester or a projector. Next video on the human design series is going to be about authorities, which is how we make the best decisions for our unique type. And it's not just the energy type, um, it goes a little bit deeper than that. So there are a variety of authorities and we'll get into all those in the next video. Until then, see you next time.